What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how to model the surroundings for your building using some uh, Google, uh, Google Maps as reference. So in a lot of cases when working on a project, uh, even if you do have an accurate plan from the surveyor, uh, it's going to be quite rare that that uh, surveyor plan covers an area wide enough for you to model the context around your uh, project or around your building. So in a lot of cases you're going to find yourself where you don't really have much information about the surroundings of your building and it's always really useful to model the surroundings of your building just to add some wider context to your project. Now in those cases Google Maps can come in really useful just because they allow you to see the surroundings. You can just uh, type in the location of your uh, project and then you get the uh, like the Google uh, Maps and then you can go to satellite view and you get a really nice image of the surroundings. So I'm going to be showing you how to use those images in order to accurately uh, model the surroundings of your building in Revit. So that's what this tutorial is going to be all about. Now before I get into that just quickly I would like to ask you to like this tutorial because it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Also I would like to ask you to subscribe if you haven't already because I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple Revit tutorials each week and also I create some advanced courses. Now those advanced courses I've got over 50 hours of content so far as well as all of my Revit project files I've got like 500 files uh, up so far can be found down uh, in the description. Just follow the first link in the description and it leads you to the website where you can view that. So if you're interested, check it out. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So we're going to be starting off this tutorial here in Google and uh, just Google Google Maps and of course the first link will lead you to Google Maps. Uh, now here I'm just going to zoom out a little bit away from my hometown and here uh, let's go to maybe Italy, maybe Rome, now, of course, it's a good idea to turn on the uh, satellite uh, view, so it looks a bit uh, a bit better. Now, let's zoom in, let's find something recognizable, something like this. Okay, so uh, you would obviously find your own uh, project site, but in this case, I'm just going to uh, use something uh, like this. Uh, now, here, uh, once you find the location, before you uh, ex export the image or before you capture the image, the first thing that you need to do is to get a measurement. Now, to get a measurement, just find a recognizable part. So, for example, in this case, uh, we have this big uh, square, and I'm going to measure from one edge to the other edge of the square. Now to measure distances here in Google Maps, what you need to do is just zoom in here, try to find the correct spot, and then I'm just going to right click and we get this little uh, drop menu. Now here we have the option to measure a distance. So once you click there, as you can see, this spot is now uh, marked as the first point of measurement. Now I'm just going to zoom into the other side and then perhaps let's click over here and now we have a measurement. Now below you're going to see that we have this measure distance and it says the total length is 235 uh, meters. Now I just suggest you write that down so you don't forget it, so that's what I'm going to do. And once we have that uh, measurement now taken down, uh, what we can do is just export the image. So let's uh, close out of this measurement, maybe zoom out a little bit, but not too much. And once we have uh, zoomed this to a correct distance, now we can take an image. Uh, now keep in mind that if you're annoyed, uh, if you have all of these uh, names, things like that, you can turn these labels off. So here you do have a menu and on the menu you do have the option to uh, turn off labels. And that's over here. So here, as you can see, it's a satellite labels on. You just click that and now it turns labels off. Okay, so once we have this, I'm going to just take a quick screen capture. Now, keep in mind that you don't have to just do regular uh, screen capture. What you can do uh, is you can export some really high quality images and I have a complete tutorial on that. So I'm just going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. But for now, we're just going to take a quick screen capture. So I'm just going to search here for the snipping tool, uh, select that. Now this is a just a basic snipping tool. It comes with any version of Windows that you have. So I'm just going to go here to new and then just take a quick snip of this uh, area. 
Now, once we have that, I'm going to go here to uh, file and then save it and uh, maybe save it somewhere on my desktop and let's call it map. I'm just going to hit save and there we go. Escape out of this menu and now let's go straight into Revit. So I'm going to open up Revit and let's start a new project. I'm going to go with the architectural template for this project and just click OK to open it up. Now, once we're here, let's uh, quickly go to the site plan. I tend to load my images in the site plan. Now, of course, you can use uh, any other level. Just keep in mind that once you load in an image, it's going to stay at that uh, level at which it was loaded in. So uh, just, uh, just remember that. Okay, now, so to insert the image, you have to go here to the Insert tab. And then on the insert tab, we have the import panel and on the import panel, we have the image button. So once I click here on the image button, I can navigate to my desktop and there I can find my map image. Now I'm just going to hit open. And as you can see, you can place your image just like that. Uh, now, once you place the image, the, uh, the main thing is you want to uh, make it according to scale or you want to scale it according to the distance you have measured. So we have measured the distance from the top to the bottom of this square, uh, the outer distance. And let's just now use that information in order to scale this correctly. So what I suggest you do is just to select this image. And then here on the modify tab, uh, on the modify panel, we have the scale option. Now, as you can see, the short cut is RE so feel free to use that if you want uh, for quicker access now I'm just going to zoom in and click somewhere over here for the first uh, distance or the first uh, point now I'm just going to click here on top for the second point make sure that you stay vertical just because it's going to make it a bit simpler so I'm just going to click somewhere here and now as you can see this image isn't that good just because we have exported it so it's going to be um, a, a bit um, the, the pixels are going to be showing, so it's going to be a bit pixelated, but uh, if you want those high quality images, as I said, uh, follow the link in the description to that tutorial. Okay, once we have that, now it's time to type in the measurement. Now, unfortunately, I haven't set the units correctly, so we have to do this in millimeters, but that's okay. So that's uh, 235 meters. So for millimeters, let's just add three zeros, hit enter, and there we go. So as you can see, this is quite large. Now what I tend to do is just move it in the center. So for that, I'm just going to use the move tool, select the center point, and then just move it here to the center of our, uh, of our model. Okay, so once we have that, maybe it's a good idea to change the units. So for that, I'm going to go here to the uh, Manage tab and then find the Project Units button here on the Settings tab. Alternatively, you can use the UN shortcut. Now here for length, let's just change it. Oops, let's just change it into millimeters. So I'm or meters. Yeah, that makes a bit more sense. Click OK and there we go. OK, so once we have this in place, now we can start uh, modeling. Now for modeling, you can just go here to architecture and then let's maybe create a floor around this. So for that floor, I'm just going to use simple boundary lines and then perhaps follow the outline of the structure. Maybe switch to an arc. Go all the way up to here. Create that arc. And you can play around like that. Maybe if we just measure this, so it's around 18 meters. So I can just use the pick lines tool with the 18 meter offset. And once we have that, I can just offset this line to the inside. As you can see, that's what we get. And then on the other side, I'm just going to use regular lines. Now make sure that the offset is set to zero. Maybe we can sketch it up from here. maybe make it look like this. Okay, now I'm just going to cap it on this side, just like that, or something like that. So you can play around like that, or maybe if you don't want to have just a floor going underneath this, you want the floor to go underneath the whole square. In that case, you would delete these lines and then maybe uh, repeat the same process on the other side, something like this, go with an arc. and maybe on another arc just to kind of finish it everything off and maybe close it off on this side. There we go. Use trim and extend to fix this part. 
and once I hit finish, as you can see, we have a floor there. Now, keep in mind, once you place any geometry like floors uh, over this, it's going to uh, block out your image. So a quick fix for this would be to go here to the visual styles uh, menu and turn it from hidden line into wireframe. So now it's a bit easier to work with or you can see the image, but the problem is now it's really hard to find your geometry. So maybe a different solution would be to just go back uh, make sure that this is in regular uh, hidden line mode, but maybe go to graphic display options and turn on transparency to something like 60%, click OK. And now you can both see the image as well as the uh, as well as Revit geometry that's kind of overlaid over it. Now, let's say we want to create the roof that goes around this square. So we have an interesting roof that's kind of curving or following the curvature of the square. So for that, I want to switch to level 2 to place the roof there. Now, unfortunately, here on level 2, I cannot see the image. So that's kind of annoying. I can see the outline, but I can only see the outer outline. I don't know the marks, where to start, where to end. I would like to include that image here as well. So to include the image, it's actually really simple and there is a, a really quick way of uh, relocating the image or copying the image to other views. And you just basically go back to the original view, in this case, the site plan where I have placed the image. You select the image and then you go here to the clipboard. Now on the clipboard, I'm just going to copy the image to clipboard. You can use the control C shortcut. And then I'm going to go here to the paste menu and then I'm going to paste it aligned to selected views. Now, this is really cool. This is an option that you have for some annotation elements or images or any view specific element. Uh, you have this option. So I'm just going to click there and then I'm just going to choose the floor plan level two. I click OK. And now if I go here into level two, as you can see, we can see that image. And now in this case, we cannot really see the uh, the floor underneath very well. Well, we can see it, but it's kind of uh, underlaid, so it, it looks kind of odd, but it's still uh, visible, which is important. Okay, now let's construct the roof. So I'm just going to click here on roof, and I'm just going to use the pick lines for the outer line, and then let's use that uh, offset of 18 uh, meters for the inner line. Maybe just bring this to zero now and pick this line and then let's try 18 again. I'm hoping that the distances are the same on both sides and they seem to be pretty similar. Okay, and now just to close everything off. Uh, now, when you switch to lines, make sure that you bring the offset down to zero because the offset will remain even though you're no longer using the pick lines tool. Anyways, I'm just going to go here and uh, cap this off here. I do the same thing on the other side and repeat the whole process on the uh, other side as well. So close everything off just like that. There we go, we have two roofs and we have a problem. So once you're cr when you're creating a roof, uh, it's not going to allow you to have two, uh, two loops. You have to have just one loop. And as you can see here, we have a couple of them. So in, what you want to do in a situation such as this is to go continue sketching. And then I'm just going to hit the escape key a couple of times to exit out of the draw tools and just select the bottom part and then hit delete. Then I'm going to hit finish to finish the top part. And now I'm just going to use the uh, mirror tool. Now we have the pick access option, but we also have the draw access option, which works a bit better in this case. And of course, I'm just going to uh, follow the center of this square just like that. And now, as you can see, the roof has been copied to the other side. Now, it is a bit odd, so we have to move it a bit closer here in place. But you can use that tool in order to kind of mirror things around, especially when you have mirrored structures such as this one. Anyways, now I'm just going to uh, go to the default uh, 3D view here on the quick access toolbar just to see what we have created. And this is what we currently have. So there we go. That's our square. Of course, it might make sense to bring up level two a little bit. So let me just select it and change the number to maybe 10 meters. I think it's going to look a bit better. There we go. I think this follows the proportions of the square uh, a lot better. 
So there you go. That's how you can insert these uh, images into your uh, Revit project. And then how can you use them as reference in order to create the rest of your material? And keep in mind that the images are going to be view specific. So they are not going to be appearing in 3D views. And if you want to copy them from view to view, you have to use the clipboard. But I still want to show you one quick trick how you can actually view this image in the 3D view. So here in the 3D view, we can't really paste images in, but what we can do uh, is we can add uh, just simple, uh, simple decals. So if I just go here to the, um, let's go to the insert tab, and then here, as you can see, the images uh, are not available, but we do have the decal option available. Now, if I open up the drop menu, we have the option to place a decal or the decal types. Now I'm just going to place a decal, but as you can see, we don't really have any decals loaded in. So decals are basically images that you can place on geometry, kind of like posters or something like that. So what I'm going to do is go here to create a new decal. Let's just call it new decal. That's okay. Now for the source, uh, you have to click here on this button in order to search for your image. I'm just going to load in my map image. As you can see, this is the image. Next, we have some options. We can set up the brightness, the reflectivity, transparency, finish. So it's currently high gloss. I'm just going to make it maybe matte. Uh, we have the luminance. Uh, I don't want any luminance. You don't want this map to glow. Uh, we have the option to add a bit pattern, uh, bump pattern. So uh, you can load in an image file basically the same image in black and white, and then it's going to give it a bit of a, a bump pattern, but that's not really important for what we're trying to achieve here. And then we have the option for cutouts. Again, I'm not going to be using this, so I'm just going to click OK. And now I can place this decal. Now, as you can see, it has been placed over here, but it's quite small. So what we have to do now is kind of stretch it a little bit, just like that. And now if I just switch into the uh, realistic mode, now you will see that the image will appear over here. But you will also see a problem with this image. The fact is that the image will not follow uh, the just the whole uh, size of the image, but it will only be placed uh, on the face of the element on which it's hosted. So in this case, this image is hosted on this floor. And that's why we can only see the image on that floor. So if you want to maybe make this uh, image show the rest of the surroundings, you would have to play around with that floor position or place it on a different floor, which is way larger. So in this case, I have stretched the image. So it kind of follows the uh, uh, kind of follows what we have. Buildings, there we go. So it's almost there in place. I can use the arrow keys just a little bit to nudge it in place. So there we go. So now it is kind of representing what we have. So we can use this actually for the square or alternatively, you can just select this uh, floor, go into edit boundary, uh, get rid of this original floor. And then let's just do a simple rectangle following the outline of the image, hit finish. And now as you can see, the whole image will be visible and we still have our roof above our building. So you do have those two options and this is the only way that you can preview these images in 3D. So if that's something that you want to do, this is how you do it. Okay, so this uh, that was the kind of quick tip at the end. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, uh, like and share this video. If you want to get these project files or if you want to get all of my advanced Balkan Architect courses, I've got like 50 hours of content and more uh, all up on my Patreon page. First link in the description. So make sure to check it out. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial and I'll be back in a couple of days with a new tutorial. So make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.